Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Nacho Problems, where we turn ordinary recipes into extraordinary nachos. I'm Nacho Queen, but you can call me M. We're back to our world tour, and our first stop is the Caribbean, because this week we're making bake and saltfish nachos. Bake and saltfish is a popular breakfast dish in many Caribbean countries. Despite the name, bakes, sometimes called floats, are a type of fried bread. Saltfish, a little more true to its name, is made from a salted fish such as herring or cod, sautéed with fresh vegetables. Let's get started! Step 1. The chips. We'll be making the bake for our chips, and for that we need half a cup brown sugar, three to three and a half cups all-purpose flour, two teaspoons baking powder, a quarter teaspoon salt, one tablespoon butter, one cup warm water, and oil for frying. Start by combining the sugar and water in a small bowl and stirring until the sugar is dissolved. Now set that aside. Next, in a large bowl, we're going to combine three cups of flour, baking powder, and salt, and mix well. Then we're going to work the butter into the flour with our fingers until it's well incorporated. Next, make a well in the center of the flour. Pour the sugar water into the well and slowly bring the flour into the well to form a soft dough. If your dough is too moist, like mine, then sprinkle in some more flour and work it in until your dough comes together. Now, sprinkle some flour down on the counter and knead the dough for about five minutes or until it's a smooth ball. Next, we're gonna place the dough into a greased bowl and cover and let rest for 45 minutes. Once rested, turn the dough out and divide it into 12 pieces. Then, take each piece and knead it into a ball. Now cover them and let them rest for another 15 minutes while we heat up Fry and Adams to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 C. Once your oil is up to temperature, we're going to take each ball of dough and roll it out into a thin disc, then place it in the fryer. It will initially sink, but eventually, as you can see, it floats to the top of the oil. I think this is where the name floats came from. Cook for about two to three minutes before turning it over and cooking for another two to three minutes. Then remove to a paper towel lined baking pan and that's our chips. Next up is step two, the cheese and toppings. We're gonna use the salt fish as our cheese and for that we need one pound salted fish. I'm using cod because that was all I could find. Two to three large or four to six medium tomatoes diced. Two to three bell peppers diced. I'm using three different colors because I like the different taste you get from them, and it looks nice. You should definitely swap one of these out for a hot pepper if you want to bring the heat. Several recipes recommended either a weary weary or a scotch bonnet. Four cloves of garlic, one tablespoon thyme, a pinch of cayenne, some olive oil, and a lot of water. The green onions and parsley will be our toppings. Start off by placing the fish in a medium bowl and covering it with cold water. Soak it for at least 15 minutes or overnight if you have time. Once it's done soaking, drain it. Then place it in a medium sauce pot full of water and bring it to a boil. Careful, it's prone to boiling over. Let it boil for about five minutes, then drain it, refill with clean water, and bring it back to a boil. Let it boil for 10 minutes this time and then remove to a bowl and flake with a fork. Now add a good drizzle of oil to a large skillet then add in the diced tomatoes, peppers, and garlic, and stir well. Saute for about five minutes or until the tomatoes are soft. Now add in the fish, thyme, and cayenne, and stir well, continuing to cook for another 10 minutes. That's our cheese. The only thing we need to do for the topping is dice our green onions. So let's skip straight ahead to step three, let's eat. I've sliced the bakes in quarters to make them more chippish. So we'll start with some of them, then spoon on a good heap of the salt fish, and finish with green onions and parsley. Now, we're not spinning the wheel of taste testers today, because we are lucky enough to have a friend of mine who's originally from Guyana here. And as this dish is very familiar to him, he's graciously offered to give us his opinion. He gave it rave reviews, even took some extra home with him. His only complaint was that it needed more heat, which is fair. I wish the cheese had been more saucy, but all in all, it turned out really well. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a like and please consider subscribing if you want to see more nacho videos. If you have an idea for a future video, you can leave a comment below or tag me on the site previously known as Twitter. 
I'm at Nacho Problems YT. I've also linked my blue sky below, but you won't find me on Facebook, Instagram, or Threads. If you're looking to steal my apron, well, that's Nacho merch, but you can get your own at a link in the description. Now, I just put my onions in the ground, and then not two hours later, it decided to snow. But I hope that's not your problem. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.